Because polyurethanes are so versatile and abrasion resistant, many times they're used to enhance the usage of many products, including rope, cordage, and webbing. And it's quite easy to coat some of these ropes. They're usually coated by hand, and they can be uh, single or double coated to give you the thickness of coating that's needed for the particular abrasion resistance. You can do it in many colors. A uh, particular coating that we're going to choose today to work with is very popular. It's called our TrueCast 603. It's a two-component polyurethane that comes in convenient one-gallon kits, and it does come in larger uh, sizes for different applications. And the pigment is supplied separate, so the base resin's in clear, and then the pigment allows you to choose the color that you want to work with that day. Today we're going to work with yellow, and uh, the way that we're going to do that is uh, the yellow pigment, uh, we're going to shake it first, because it tends to settle, just for a few seconds. And then we're going to take it and put it in the component B, and then shake that. And then once that's done, we're going to pour it into the larger can, the component A. Now, once you've put the pigment in the component B, it's always best if you quickly put it into the component A, so the pigment doesn't change color. If it sits around 30, 40 minutes on some of the colors, it might change. So, the thing to do is you want to open up this A side. Sometimes it can be a little tough. And because there's no solvent here, there's no danger of fire explosion, you can warm the top up, just the rim gently, to help get the lid off. In some cases, not always. The lid off, the container's about three quarters of the way full, and we're gonna add our component B and our pigment. Some cases you want the coating to penetrate deeply into the line, and in other cases you just want it to ride on the outside surface so the, the uh, line remains a little bit more flexible. In the case if you want it to penetrate a little bit more, you can add, add up to about five, just 5% 5 of tiling to the final mixture of the 603 with the pigment and the component B to help that first coat penetrate. Now this isn't needed all the time, just in special applications where penetration deeply into the jacket or to the cordage itself is needed. When mixing the PureCast 603, it's really important that the materials are first stabilized to at least say 70 to 80 degrees. If the resins are thicker, they end up being colder and, and colder and thicker and harder to mix up. If they're warmer, they'll be thinner, but then you don't have as much working time with the polymers you need. Now, for samples below a quart, below a gallon, it's easy to mix them up with a, by hand with a spatula. For, for samples that are a gallon and above, it's important that you always use a jiffy mixer. In this case, I've got an electric drill and a jiffy mixer to work with. And we don't want to really whip in a lot of air. You just want a nice, even mixture, but you want to see that mixture rolling over and moving this around on the sides and the bottom to make sure you have an even mixture. You can actually see the A and the B kind of going together. And you want to give it, say, about a two or three minute mix to make sure you've included all the A or the B. Because remember, if you don't mix up all the A and the B together, you may have sticky spots on the line later on. Okay, so we got our 603 mixed up and we're ready to coat some rope. So we've hung the rope up and we've got it so that we can easily reach it. Now longer lines, you can hang it from rafters and things. So this is a nice, easy piece to work with. We're going to use our hands. There's no need to pile the coating on. You want to take it in your hand, squeeze it and press it into it. And you can see where the coating is and isn't going. You want to put it on a nice, even coat. It's going to settle to one even thickness. So like I said, it's, it doesn't do you any good to pile the coating on. Maybe coating twice in some areas is what you'll need, but more than likely just one coat is going to do it.
With our abrasion resistant urethanes, high build especially, the PureCast 603 seems to be the choice. And it does add, you can see this one was, uh, was uh, hand dipped. We're going to show you how to do this in a later video. But you can see it does rigidize the rope somewhat. This is a smaller line that was hand coated. And you can see that it does add some stiffness to it. But we do have softer ones that will give uh, more pliability to the line if it's needed. This is a line where only just the eye was uh, hand dipped. Most of these were dipped twice to get to achieve the correct millage. Well, we've been talking about coating ropes, nylon webbing, slings, and things like that. This is actually a case study that we have here before you. This is actually a helicopter lifting line. It's a synthetic line uh, made of spectra. And what the customer needed to do is to achieve three things. One is abrasion resistance in the eye section where it actually hooks on. And this was done with our PureCast 603. And then to encapsulate or pot the neck section with a softer but yet more elastic polymer. And this would be our TrueCast CS252, which is a 70 durometer on the shore A. And finally, a color coat and a fiber consolidation, just a slip coat of our FiberLock 100. It's kind of interesting how they did this. The lines were woven back into themselves and then uh, freehand coated like we were showing in some previous videos. And then a uh, polymer mold was made. And this one's uh, kind of a real interesting one to see. This has actually uh, silicone inserts that uh, allow the line to be pressed together. And then the neck polymer, or the CS252, was poured into this mold, held for about 30 minutes, and then the whole ensemble was pulled apart to reveal the finished part. Most of these things take about three days to finally cure. The urethanes are two part A and B, and then the fiber lock needs no mixing. It actually comes colored, and it's just a stir to get the pigment back up into it and a dip to, uh, to consolidate the fabric, and it dries fairly rapidly. And we're going to show you actually how to do the fiber lock 100. The coatings that we have here for coating ropes, nylon slings, or high build. That'd be like our PureCast 603 or the CS252 for pilot encapsulation and the CS100 for a little softer. But for coating the line and consolidating the fibers and just adding a little bit of coloration, our fiber lock 100 is the best choice for that. It's not a two part, it's just a single part, kind of an air dry type of coating. And we've actually have some poured out here and we have a piece of uh, just regular nylon rope that we want to show you how this goes it's going to be done. So uh, we've already, this already has a color mix into it. This one is uh, olive drab green for military applications. The line is uh, simply dipped into it and allowed to absorb the coating. And then the remainder of it squeegeed off. I'm going to use my glove in this case. And then it's just allowed to uh, lay on the shop floor overnight until the, it evaporates and then it's coiled back up and forms a really nice color coat and it consolidates those fibers so it has a little bit better slip.